I had talked him into taking the train instead of flying. I went to sleep, and somebody shot a 22 at, at the, the, the window right where... And I said, what happened? What, did somebody throw a rock? And he said, no, somebody shot at the train. How did you find out? You told me there was uh, definitely gunshot. Yeah, there was, there was lead on the window. There were fragments of lead, and it wasn't as if a stone had shattered the window. It was, it was a definite bullet shot. So but after you were shot at, I guess everything went fine, right? <laughs> no, then the train broke down. <laughs> there was Gee. a derailment a half hour in front of us, so we had to get off the train and be bussed into Baltimore. So. It was really... You know, Ten was, people on one seat, you were saying. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> Jammed we're it. glad you finally did make it. And your relationship, obviously, is uh, on the right track. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Got it. How did you two meet? I had an antique shop in Brentwood, Los Angeles, California, and Craig came in to sell me some quilts about uh, four and a half years ago. No. And I'll let you tell the rest. I stayed. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, and thank you for being our guest. Stay on the show. That's the relationship. Could you go into a little more detail? You brought in the quilts, uh, and she... Yeah, we had a business arrangement, and... Uh, she needed some antiques from back east, which I went back and got. And when I came back out, uh, things just seemed to clip. Uh, I'd like to say, Richard, that at the time that he came into the shop, the first time, my youngest daughter was there, who is roughly his age. George and, George Ann? George Ann. Yeah. And I thought that he was getting acquainted with me, you know, because of George Ann. I thought, oh, well, you know, he's going to get next to me so he can see, mm -hmm. you know, George Ann when he comes back out. And because he was real friendly, I didn't... I didn't dream that it was because of me. So how did you handle that, him being very friendly with you? Uh, well, I, I thought I treated him like a son. I treated him like you would, you know, uh, like you know how young kids are with older women. I just started treating him like a son. And, uh, it was very frustrating. <laughs> very frustrating. I would never have gone out with him because I wouldn't go out with anybody three years younger than me, let alone 21. Why not? I, feeling, I just, I, you know, I was raised in that where you go with somebody that the guy's got to be at least three Society. months older than you or something, you know. <laughs> Well, tell us about the attraction that developed between the two of you. What changed and made you decide to go out with him? Well, actually, he kind of caught me unaware as we went to a movie one night uh, with, and I, at the time I had a little housekeeper that lived with me that was like a friend, and because I was still treating him, you know, like he was going to be George Ann's boyfriend. And I went, <laughs> I went to sleep in the movie, and my head fell over because I was really tired. We were working hard at the store. And... He the had old his head fell on fell Yeah, on yeah, and he had his arm like just uh, he started rubbing my arm like that. Like that. And just like I this, woke up, you know, over. and uh -huh. I thought, what am I gonna do? I mean, <laughs> what do I do? And when we got home, I said, you know, I want to ask you a question. And I thought I might as well get everything out. I said, you know, were you were you trying to turn me on? And he said, It's about time you noticed. And I said, Well, what for? <laughs> What's the, what's the problem? <laughs> so anyway, from there, it just happened. And I thought, well, you know, he wants to go with me because I'm Cher's mother. Or then I thought, well, maybe he thinks I have money or whatever, you know. And of course, it turned out that it was me. Had no, yeah, it had nothing to do with the fact that you knew that you were no, Cher's mom or anything like that. was like one that. of the hardest things to deal with in the beginning of the relationship was the motives. Everybody thought uh, when, when you have somebody as beautiful as Georgia, if you have somebody as beautiful as Georgia, with a very... Uh, I look like I had money. I lived yeah. in a big house, and at mm -hmm. the time I was driving a Rolls Royce, because I had, you know, I was just... Well, that's a good that sign. Would give the impression. <laughs> yes. yeah. And plus, her daughter was a, a very big star. And but my house was in foreclosure, yeah. and he knew that, and he knew, you know, he so knew my financial everybody situation. Everybody thought the wrong motives uh, were in play, instead of just the, the thing that should be there. You know, we well, loved each other. But people weren't ready to accept. I mean, even my friends who thought, oh, hey, you know, look what George is doing now. You know, but they weren't ready to accept me going with someone that was 21 years. For serious, they, for a play, it was fine. I mean, if it was going to be a lark, everybody was joking about it. And I really think, actually, well, no, I guess your friends were more accepting of me, really. I think a younger generation yeah, would they be were more accepting, accepting of this type of, of relationship. Mm -hmm. When you get somebody in George's age bracket, uh, they're brought up in a Victorian type of setting. And being brought up in a Victorian type of setting, it's, it's uh, you know, you, you can't contend with this type of relationship. Did the two of you ever discuss the age differences when you first started going oh, out? God, Did you yes, say? yeah. I, could, I can't stay up until 1 or 2 o'clock every night like he was doing. And my energy doesn't, you know, I don't have the same interests. He likes to skydive, you know. Whew. And my, I mean, I like to read a book or something like that. Yeah, we have completely different interests. And I had always thought in the past that to have a successful relationship, you at least had to have vaguely similar interests. We don't. You know, we really She's don't. Non-physical. 
other completely. than the career. I, I, I don't know, you probably heard the story about on my 50th birthday, him asking me what I wanted to do that I hadn't done before in my life. And I said, well, I've done everything except sing, which I started out to do. He said, so sing. And I said, sure, I'm going to start out at 50 and I'm going to be a star. He said, why not? And I said, well, because nobody's ever done it before. He said, so do it. Well, you sing you pretty well, it. we understand. I do sing pretty good. And <laughs> we're going to bring an orchestra in, but the, uh, the people are talking orchestra got hung up in the derailment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're not going to be able to, uh, to do that unless, we could, unless you can the, sing without no, music. No, I'll tell you what's going to happen. I'll play the phone. We're going from, we're going from tech to here to Texas, and we're going to cut an album there. A, a, a single first? single first. A single and the first, and then an, an, the album, uh, the single will be out in September, anyway. So then you can hear me sing. <laughs> Great. So are you her manager now, so to speak? Not really manager, no. Uh, I, I would never put somebody with her caliber of voice into my hands, not knowing the first thing about, mm -hmm. uh, uh, about the entertainment business. No, we have some people down in Austin, Texas. That's, it's a firm called Stuart Brofsky. Brofsky Stewart. Brofsky Stewart. Brofsky Stewart, yeah. Uh, we just I knew Stewart. I knew Stewart. <laughs> and uh, they're really great young guys in the entertainment business. They've got Carol King. Carol King oh. and Jerry Jeff Jerry Walker. Jeff Not Walker. bad. You know, you said something interesting that uh, at first when you started to date each other, you were saying to yourself, how is uh, anybody going to accept this? I mean, sure, for fun it's okay, mm -hmm. but for serious it's mm -hmm. difficult uh, mm -hmm. to understand. Mm -hmm. So how did you make them understand? We didn't. We didn't. At first, I was, the first year, I really, truly mean this, I was in absolute agony. Every time we went to a restaurant or every time we went out, I was, you know, and I would just, just on the inside, because people would, you know, look, and they would look uh, really more at me, you know, like I should be the responsible one. A <laughs> cradle robber. Yeah. Yeah, they would say, what is she, you know, she's probably got money. That's probably, you know, and that's what we got the first year. And I thought, I don't know if I can do this. I'd, and then after a while, he convinced me, he said, forget about those people. You and I are the important people. And after I stopped caring about what other people thought, they backed off. It was the strangest thing. Yeah, we now we go into a restaurant, I could care less if they, everybody in the room stares and whatever they're thinking, that's their problem. Well, now everybody knows he's Craig Spencer and you're Georgia Hope. Right, right. Do you think that because you've become so famous now, that helps the relationship work better? It gives it a little bit more credibility. Yeah. And especially because of the time element. At first, when it was just six months or a year, people thought, well, this will be over very quickly. Yeah. yeah. But it's been uh, four be. and a half years now, and people are starting to see that uh, they've gone through some rough times and they're still together. So there's obviously something that binds them together other than money or stardom or career. What or is that? It's, it's a real strong inner love. I need a father. <laughs> well, if you're an older woman who's uh, been involved uh, with a younger man, or perhaps you're contemplating that kind of a relationship, here is some of the best advice you might be able to get. Georgia Holt and Craig Spencer, and you can call and ask your questions. 481-1313. We're going to make a dialing for dollars call and then get to your phones. Now, Craig is uh, 31. Georgia is uh, 52 years young. And Thank you. <laughs> you came with your parents. They're here. From, they yeah. live in Ocean City, you yeah. say. And I was wondering, uh, asking during the call, what your mom and dad felt about the relationship with a woman who's 21 well, years... Well, unfortunately, they got wind of it through an ex-girlfriend. And I'm afraid that they got all the wrong information. What information uh, did they get? Very tainted. That it was a, a Hollywood harlot yeah. taking me into her home <laughs> yeah, out, yeah. In, uh, out in California. And uh, it was rather hard to convince them over the telephone, but when we... When we went back east to visit them and get my belongings and close out the store that I had in Washington, uh, they met her, and uh, they both fell very much in love with her. And uh, since then, it's been very easy. I heard you. I heard your mom screaming to Oprah once. What did she say? Once I. She said the same thing Greg just said. That Craig just said that uh, as soon as she met her, that he just sort of brought her home for dinner one day. Yeah. Hey, mom. And Three thousand miles away. That's right. And as soon as she met. Her,